Hello guys, on this lecture we will go through the action rules really briefly about the action rules. I will give detailed explanation about everything and what it does and what each action and when to use it later on the course. Uh, but again, just to feel how it works and to make it very very simple, just to understand how it works. Uh, let's uh, make it um, uh, simple. So I will try to explain it briefly what it means. Uh, since we are working against an API and not against code, uh, all the requests that you send will not be like you see here through code. It will be sent through an HTTP client, which can be practically anything, since uh, s such as uh, a Google application, something in your code, uh, any any HTTP consumer through browser through your mobile phone, anywhere, anything can send a request to Gravity API and get the response as, as a service. You don't really communicate with it through code. Of course you can and we will do that. But the point is that you communicate it over HTTP. So how can you, uh, let's say this is the first problem when you work with service we're supposed to execute. Um, a sequence, how would you tell it to execute action in a, in a certain order? Or how will you tell it to extract something and give it back to you based on the action that you send it? Based on the action that you uh, send in the first place. How can you uh, keep all this integrated, all the sequence integrated and make it still be simple and readable and usable? Um, this is one of the major challenges of creating good API, but since automation is very complicated, so as simple as it sounds, the API um, uh, might seem not so simple at first, but believe me, it is the moment you understand the concept. So Gravity API composed of two major objects, action rules and extra extraction rules. Action rules job is to tell the engine which action I need to perform before I'm getting to the information I want to extract. What is the sequence of action I need to do to get to my goal, to get to my target page? Extraction rules are actually tells to the engine after you got to the target page what is the information you wish to extract or you wish to evaluate or you wish to check. Um, it is possible to use action rules inside extraction rules and makes the make the extraction rules more complicated if you want to navigate through multiple pages and extract more information and aggregate it under one entity. Uh, so at first we will start with the very basic and very simple action rules. We will open Google page and uh, we will just type the action bring us to the uh, to the results and all we need to do at first again I will give deeper explanation about everything later on this is just a brief how to use it and how to fill it and here we go action rules if you can see we have we have here the action rules object which is an array of action rule which is an array of action rule. Uh, let's say action rules. Sorry, action rules. This is an array of action rule, and we will make new array, and we will add new action rule. And action rule, it's basically you can choose from a list what action you like to do. So. We will say action type. You see, each action rule holds certain of elements and properties. We will go deeply into each and every one of them later on. So don't mind yourself with that too much right now. Just follow the step to understand what it does. And we will say action type equal. And then you will see this is an enum. So we can choose from a list. And our first will be go to URL, the argument attribute. Uh, sorry, the argument property, uh, it, it's what will be delivered to the action, what is the argument of the action. So we will say our target page, and we will add another action rule. 
this action rule will be send keys after sorry action type and this will be send keys and when I want to interact with an element I should say element element to act on what is the element I want to send keys to and the argument will be the actual keys I want to send inside I didn't fill in yet the element that I want to act on I will do it shortly uh, we will do it together to all the elements I'm just building the sequence now when we send keys to Google we will have the autocomplete we will have the autocomplete box opened so we need to click on the first result so I will add another action rule I will add another action rule which, which says action type and this time we will say click because we want to click on the first and element to act on this will be where we're going to click on there is no argument to pass so no need to fill in and the last one will be <coughs> sorry the last one will be to close the browser because we want to dispose of the browser action type equal and we say close browser and that's it pretty much now let's fill in what is missing here so we will open google.com and let's see what is the expat of this element and we will say copy copy expat again if you follow my other course you will understand exactly why I like expat so much because of the flexibility a uh, gravity API is not limited to expat only it will also work with all identifier given or supported by selenium so you can use ID CSS selector whatever suits you you don't really have to do, to use expat but expat is the default later on this course we will go through all the options so again don't mind with yourself so much right now don't mind with yourself and we will add the expat here the, this is the element we're acting on and this is the keys and we want to click on the let's say what happened when I say gravity and then it gives me more so if I will say inspect I will see this is a list box so we have let's check the expat so we have UL which have role property role and it will be list box and we want the first element which is li you can see it give us all the list when you give something like this to gravity it will know to take the first one unless you said otherwise so if I want the first one I would just have to put it like this and this will click on the first element uh, that's it for this lecture guys uh, on the next lecture we will go through the uh, how to send this request to gravity api and see everything how it works so thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you on the next lecture